Cooties. Strife. You know who I am? Yeah. I met your sister once. She was a lot bigger than you. <laughs> but not as pretty. <laughs> what do you want, little horse man? <clears throat> Malgros the Defiler. For conspiring with Lucifer, committing countless crimes against all of creation, and by order of the Council, I hereby sentence you to death. Dark Side of Genesis was the prequel we didn't quite want. But it was also really good. Two quick disclaimers before we start. I did play this game on a Steam controller and that was an experience in of its own, which there will be a video about. And you're also going to see in all the footage there is a Steam controller overlay. And I'm also going to find it really hard to talk about this game without spoiling it because everything just links so well. The game was played in the same system that every other review in this channel was played on, which is the 7700K and GTX 1080. I'm going to defile your corpse in ways you can't possibly imagine. Feed what's left to my boys. Horse meets their favorite. One, two, three. <laughs> Sorry, we're in a hurry. Oh, and, uh, I'm not alone. Now let's get into the overview, and as the title says, this game's a prequel to the previous three games that came before it, and the most beautiful thing about this game is how it sets up the previous games in the series. Warren Strife was sent by the Council, as per usual, to unravel a plot by Samael, who you remember from Darksiders 1, and Lucifer. So they're soon going to find out that it's actually all just Lucifer and Samael isn't doing much, or as much as any other Darksiders villain truly has done. But this game is broken up into 16 stages, which always introduces new enemies and furthers the story. As well as that, you're going to get some power-ups, which you can actually use in earlier stages, meaning these levels are meant to be replayed in order to find some of the secrets, which will help you advance throughout the story. These secrets include anything from health cores to wrath cores to even pieces of the Abyssal Armor set, which if anyone has ever actually tried to 100% a Darksiders game, you'll know that the Abyssal Armor set is always a fucking bastard. Now let's just be real here for a second, this game is actually overall quite fun, but also really frustrating, and I'm going to tell you why. Kicking off with the story. So initially you're sent out looking for Sam Ayel, and that goes well, so Sam Ayel's been found. Mission finished, right? WRONG! You soon learn from your Sam Ayel and your old buddy, your old pal, your old friend of yours, Bulgrim, that Lucifer's been making a big play, and you need to take his plans and scrap them. As any devoted Darksiders fan can tell you, that's not exactly a simple task. And as you trek through all 16 stages of this level, you're going to learn more about Strife, and his character will get to flourish. As well as that, the chemistry between him and War is what really humanises him, if you can humanise the Nephilim. My only gripe is that they actually change Strife's voice character, so his voiceover from Darksiders 3 is not the same one in Darksiders Genesis. I was really hyped when I heard him in Darksiders 3. I was really annoyed when I heard him in Darksiders Genesis. The other sins have been destroyed by my hand. Death worked to free War and clear his name. More importantly, we have exposed a great conspiracy. Malgros the Defiler, for conspiring with Lucifer, committing countless crimes against all of creation, and by order of the Council. Now, I don't want to give away too much, because if I give away one thing, it could spoil another thing. So I'm going to be very careful with what I say, because of these moments in the game, they are really good, and they do develop the story for the characters, as well as the overarching world building that's happening here. What I will say is, is everyone has ulterior motives and used to are the unwitting duo carrying all of these plans to fruition. What I can say about Darksiders Genesis is it takes a gripping story from Darksiders 1, 2 and 3 and just absolutely throws it in the can. Instead it makes its own little backstory and tells you how things came to be for the first game, mainly focusing on the seven seals and why they were created, as well as touching on the backstory of the horsemen and the Nephilim and how they came to be. Putting it bluntly, this is just belated world building for a story that already has a really brimming world and I don't want to spoil anything for you because the story is a driving factor of this game and because it's a driving factor it does have to be very good, gripping and engaging and it's absolutely fucking amazing. 
If not, just a teeny bit pointless. Going off topic right here just a little bit because I am a fan of the Darksiders series and though I do love this game, it's an absolutely pointless game because it doesn't further the already existing story. It's backstory for before Darksiders 1, so it doesn't actually help us move the story. Everything that's foreshadowed in Darksiders Genesis, we've already seen happen. Even though this game does build war and strife up to be a little more better, it does give us more insight into strife, I feel unless this game has a huge impact in Darksiders 4, it's just another game in the catalogue and was absolutely pointless. Good lord, there's more gold here than we'll ever see in a lifetime. Good Lucifer of Arthur. Well, it does not seem to be Maybe we should get a closer look at some of this gold. Take some for our uh, investigation. Not a coin, brother. Lest I cut off your hand. The last person. I'd expect to be making that joke. Yeah, it was fun, but you know, you can still have a fun and pointless game in a series. Now let's get on to the mechanics. Genesis plays almost like any other Darksiders game in the series, but this time it's from an isometric point of view. This allows you to see more of the arena based combat and it does help him play in a strife. After all, he's more of a twin stick shooter to the hack and slash that is war. I think all you new and existing fans of Darksiders series will be able to agree with me when I say that Strife has the most unconventional weapon out of all the horsemen. Wars got the sword, whereas Death got the scythe and Fury got the whip, and they all got one thing in common those are melee weapons. Strife's get guns. Now I have played a few twin stick shooters in my time and what I will say that I never thought I would say is that Darksiders Genesis has some excellent gunplay and variety. I mean granted both guns are revolvers but the different ammo types for them that do different things. I ain't gonna lie when you get chain shot and you go into the arena, pretty damn fun. All of this of course is facilitated by the new isometric viewpoint that this game has and it just allows you to cleave through enemies extremely easily as Strife, allowing the gap between the enemies to come closer and closer for you to switch characters extremely fluidly and easily straight to war to then cleave through the enemies like nothing. Those power-ups you also received through the game can also be used to aid you in combat as every Darksiders fan knows they're for puzzles first and foremost, but they can be used in combat. Strife, however, seems to have got the more puzzle-oriented power-ups, whereas War got the Swiss Army power-ups. Big fist to destroy big crystals, or destroy enemy's face. Dealer's choice. Now, aside from the standard drops that you get from enemies in every other Darksiders game, this one comes with cores, and what cores do is they allow you to slot these little creature cores into a skill tree. Each core has its own set of values, either better for life, wrath or power. Every enemy will drop these, this also includes bosses who have their own select part for that as well. Each core gives you a little bonus and if you match the bonus of the core with what it is in the skill tree, it does a little better. All of these go up to level 3 or in other words collect 30. Apart from the bosses, you only gotta collect 3 of those right? No way am I killing the same boss 30 fucking times but really we should talk about how the game actually plays. Now I'm not a big fan of the isometric perspective as a whole, not just in this game, in any other game I've played that seems to have it, but this game did help me understand how it can have its purpose, even if that purpose isn't we're on a tight budget. Now this perspective is really kind of bad for War because he's more hack and slash, but it does really well for Strife and that's where it really shines there. We've already had a War focused game under the guise of Darksiders 1, we're more than likely going to get a Strife focused game in Darksiders 4, but as a way to kind of give us a background on the character and also make a decent game, this was a good choice. Now as any Darksider fan will tell you, there's two main concepts to the game that make them really good. There's the combat and there's the puzzles, however with Genesis the puzzles are definitely the weakest part and I found myself being stuck more because I ended up getting lost due to the camera perspective and the level layout more so than to the puzzles. Now of course in saying that, you're still going to spend upwards of 8 hours playing this game because in order to actually play the game comfortably and be able to beat the levels, you're recommended to have a certain power score. To do that, that's where the aforementioned cores come in. So you've got to constantly swap out these cores for better ones and upgrade them in turn to get your power level up so that way the levels are actually playable. Now apart from that, it's still pretty standard as Darksiders go, but instead you've got two characters and an isometric viewpoint instead of one and a third person viewpoint. As well as that, you know, the hub world and stages rather than just this big open world plan. Now, in the hub world, there is also a bit of a labyrinth in there where you can do some little puzzles. It's not much, but they all kind of pertain to the levels that you've just done, where you'll get the puzzle done and then you'll get some boatman tokens. Overall,
overall there's a few Boatman tokens in there you can collect. I haven't done it all myself but it is still quite fun and the little easter eggs in there are also quite cute. I mean have you ever actually seen War pet a hellhound? It's rather funny. Now as well as that there's also the arena which if you played Darksiders 2 you'll remember a similar type of arena but this one goes all the way up to 10 and then it just gets endless and it's only got one little bug where one of the enemies which is also actually a bug burrows underground but because it's not actually solid like the rest of the world it does end up falling through and dying. That does take a few seconds though you don't get the points for it and it's a little frustrating but it's an easy way to grind out levels. My overall thoughts in this game are that it is a solid addition to the Darksiders universe and it does provide backstory and foreshadowing for Darksiders 1 which means if you haven't played any of them this is actually the perfect point to pick up. For our more long standing fans like myself it is a good way to get some more backstory without reading the comics or the book although if anybody knows where I can pick up those comics you maybe want to tell me because I really want to read those. Now of course myself I still feel this is all kind of redundant because in the grand scheme of things we don't really need to know this information, it's not vital to the world, everything we need to know was already explained in previous games, like how in Darksiders 2 we find out why the four Nephilim who are the horsemen are the only four Nephilim bar Lilith who survived and what happened to them. Spoiler alert, you four fucking slaughtered them. Now, like I was saying though, this game does feel pretty redundant because we don't need to know all this information but it is nice to have, it's given us a back look on everyone else, it's telling us how Strife feels about everything that's going on, how he's constantly questioning everything and he's the exact opposite of War who doesn't question everything it just blindly follows. Or so Darksiders 1 would have you think. I myself do feel this game's going to do a little more for Darksiders 4 than it will for Darksiders 1, 2 and 3 as this has given us more of a look into strife and war but war's already had his game where strife hasn't. This game was just a way to sort of develop strife a little more I believe and as such it does a good job of that. I won't really give my scores here, that's more to be read at sidemissionblog.co.uk, link is in the description if you want to read this full review. There is a little shorter than this and there's a lot less ad-libbed but at the same time that review also had to go onto Steam gotta love having a character limit. I do not like the isometric camera angle and that's just me and that's just me nitpicking on that one, not my favourite type of view. I do feel it benefits the game but it does also hinder some of the beauty because I bet there were so many hours making every creature look unique and every detail and every outfit was planned meticulously and perfected to look its best, only for the player to never be able to see it because the camera is so far away. This game is truly blessed with a curse in my opinion. Again though, that's just my opinion. Don't take my hatred for the isometric camera as something that you need to take into account as well. If you like the isometric cameras, then by all means you may just like this game. If you don't like isometric cameras, you may not like this game. If you don't like isometric cameras, but you do like Darksiders, it's entirely your choice. Anyway guys, I want to thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed and remember, I'm not going to tell you to like, comment and subscribe because that's your choice. It's a free world. I just hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Catch you in a bitch.